This video tutorial is a very short introduction to the print mode manager. This is very advanced uh, techniques for making your own print modes and getting uh, the kind of output you would like to tweak or improve or general learning. Print mode manager is located under devices menu, manage print modes. If you had more than one printer driver, you would need to choose from this list here. We only have one printer driver installed. Uh, as long as you don't set any of these uh, filters, you will be presented with the entire list of printers, print modes that are available for this printer driver. The naming convention here that you see is historical and is not really used anymore because the ink density wizard is the primary method for calibrating your ink density. But previous product, within a particular resolution, 1440 by 1440, we would differentiate the amount of ink density based on internal controls inside the print mode. So the SD would be a single density. That would be kind of the lowest amount of, amount of ink density we could provide. The HS is just a bi-directional printing version, so it's faster. And we call it a HS just for high speed. The DD is uh, uh, referred to as double density, and it will give you incrementally more ink density and ink volume than what the SD does, the bidirectional faster version. And the triple density will give you, again, the most amount of ink possible for that particular resolution. This is, again, legacy. Everybody is expected to use the ink density test page. To start off with, you can just right-click on a starting point print mode, right click and you choose copy. Uh, alternatively, all the same options for doing your copying and renaming are available at the top. So we're going to right click on a print mode and copy it. And we're going to just name it to be anything which is meaningful to either ourselves or for, for, for the customer. And it is now on our list. Test for Chrome Line 1. Double click it to edit it. Or you can right click on it and edit it will get us to the properties for this particular print mode. The calibration control is our uh, basic curves for linearizing the, the print mode. Uh, the 0, 0 image is top right, and 100, 100 is, is bottom left. We show the curve data based on density values. And again, for this print mode, in-rip separations is on. Uh, separation curves are, are only valid if you have uh, light ink channels for um, say if this was a paper print mode for a a color Epson. So again this is hidden by default for anything that that doesn't have more than four color planes. The maximum ink is a global maximum ink restriction. Again it only makes sense in terms of a uh, four color or process color print mode for a half tone single color print mode always set this for 400 and ignore it. ICC profiles only make sense for color print modes where we're doing ICC calibrations. For screen printing and halftones, very important that the boxes remain unchecked. If you were to enable them, then your color values would go through the ICC mapping the workflow and then you would get unexpected printed results coming out the other end. It would be a very confusing situation. Make sure your ICCs are always off. Printer options is probably the most uh, useful, beneficial one, where you can control all the features relevant to this particular printer. You can choose any resolution that you want to start from. We're going to leave it on a 1440 by 1440. The ink setup is important. Single black photo is uh, what we want to leave it set for. Maybe you wanted to experiment with a multiple black or a single black. There are other ways to do it, but... Um, Again, this is an advanced control. Further on, though, you can uh, get all the other controls for the cutting the paper, the media uh, adjustment offset, the um, setting of the margins. In particular for Epson's, whether you're using the um, auto sheet cartridge tray or if you're using a, a, some roll fed mechanism. And manual feed is, again, from the little slot top feed at the top on a 4900. If you need to change bidirectional or the tension, if you have something that needs to be tweaked, that's very, very, um, that re refers to mechanics of the printer, 
This is where you come under printer options. These features will be unique to the printer. So what we see here is only valid for the Epson 4900 series. As soon as you load a printer driver for say the Epson 11880, you would see some different options. Halftones are enabled on this print mode by default. And so uh, these are the default uh, frequencies and angles and sh dot shapes that will get used for separating out colors. All your spot colors will get printed with a 6045 frequency angle. Enable application halftoning means that this particular print mode will accept halftone information that gets sent from a third party application. So if you want CorelDRAW halftone settings to get used, you can turn on application halftoning. And if you want specifically the CorelDRAW dot shape to get used, you would turn on application spot function. But just to clarify, this combination of parameters means that it will accept and use the halftone options, frequency and angles found in Corel, but it will ignore the dot shape and will use the dot shape as set by the print mode. And turning them both off means that it will completely ignore the halftone frequency angle and dot shape set by CorelDRAW and will use the frequency angle and dot shape as set in the print mode. Variable dot setup is probably the most uh, confusing to understand. Essentially it is what controls the ink density. We are using a 2 bit per pixel resolution as set under printer options. That's why we have four levels of density here to choose from. So gray refers to the gray level. There is only a single black being used so it, would, it only refers to gray. And it is currently set for 2 to 100% which is the mid-range amount of ink. So this again, this is strictly controlling the amount of ink density. If we wanted to increase the amount of ink density to the absolute maximum possible, we would use 3 at 100%. To start decreasing it and incrementally, 3 at 90% puts in a little bit less ink than 3 at 100. And also 3 at 80 puts in less ink than 3 at 90. We can continue this on down to go down to 3 at 10 percent. At a certain point when you flip down to 2 at 100, 2 at 100 percent puts down less ink than what 3 at 10 percent does. What we're doing is we're phasing out the large dots. The 3 refers to the large ink droplet. On an Epson, that's probably 26 picoliters or, or some number like that. Once we phase out the 26 picoliter drop, now we're using the medium ink droplet, which is probably 12 picoliters. So now a halftone pattern is being built up with only the small and the medium ink droplets. Again, if you want to continue decreasing this, you can go down to 250%, which is less ink, down to 2 at 10%, which is less ink again. And when it flips over to 2 at 1, 1 at 100%, we are putting down only small ink droplets, which again on an Epson is probably 4 picoliters or something. To turn it off completely, put 0 at 0%. Zero this is, again, this is a very advanced function. It is not expected for you to be in here. It is just more for educational purposes. If you are playing with the ink density test page, the ink density test page adjusts this control for you. The criteria are the descriptions that get used for filtering your print modes. So let's say that we had a collection of print modes that were made for some special third-party ink. They're still for separations. The medium manufacturer can be somebody specific. It's the greatest film since uh, sliced bread. So once we created this print mode, we'll save it. The media description is just help in the filtering of the product. So if you want to see all the print modes that have Epson ink, you won't see this one down here. If you want to see only the, the, the print modes that have special third-party ink, we have one available.
It's the, you know, the greatest film. Also, for the manufacturer, you know, you can be some generic or specific media category. It was always be for separations. So the criteria affect how the print mode gets displayed uh, when a customer starts going through the filtering process. Just a reminder, this is fairly advanced in terms of the controls that are available. You have complete control over every aspect of uh, the RIP and the printer mechanics. So there's a lot you could achieve. This is again just more for educational purposes. You're not really needed to come in here uh, unless you need to do a special linearization. So that's it for this tutorial.